welcome back to Point and Shoot. I'm your host, Susan Hagstrom, and this is our show about basic photography. Today, I'm really happy to be joined by my guest, Margot Chiel. Uh, Margot is a photographer based in Cohasset, where she has her own home studio. Uh, she does um, lots of photography we're going to hear about, but specializes in aerial photography. So thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Susan. Great to be here. Um, we want to hear first about how you got started in photography and uh, when that was and what your training was like. I actually came to photography through art. Oh. I, um, I was an art major in college okay. and I, I pursued that and I actually worked at Channel 2 for a number of years after college. Oh. In Boston? In Boston. Okay. Channel 2 in Boston, WGBH. And then um, several years after that, I helped co-found an art and craft center. So at that oh. time, I was the person behind the scenes promoting artists and photographers who would come to our gallery oh, and our center. And so I was learning a lot that way. Um, but I, my, I, I feel that the most important thing about um, any kind of art is how you see. And I had it um, from my, my education, but also I had it then as I moved along and involved and immersed myself in the art world. Okay. Yeah, when you say how you see, they talk about if you have good vision, right? And uh, they all say artists and photographers, you know, they can see something, and that's right. that's not something that you can necessarily learn. That's usually right. some kind of gift, and right? particularly so. with photography, because it's there in the instant, and right? It's your it's your taking it. Right so then, when you there. got into photography, was your training formal or informal? Well, it depends or on what you of, mean. Kind I, of, was it kind of hands-on? Uh, it know? was. It was a mix. It was hands-on, but also I, I took a number of workshops. Okay. And I went to conferences. Okay. And I still do. Yeah. Um, particularly with the digital age. There's always when that something. Came along. To There's be always learning. something new. That's for sure. So you were, and at that time, what kind of photography were you, you doing when you started? Were you doing aerial photography then, or? Well, I think I had always done photography, um, but I never considered it my main. Okay my main art form. Okay. And once I, what happened is I, when my children left for college, yes. I was ready to do something new. And it ended up being flying. Oh. I never expected it, but okay. it did. I took flying lessons and once I did an introductory flight, I was hooked. That okay. was it. <laughs> wow. And um, so I was taking lessons and at the same time I was doing more photography and I was starting to um, get commissions to do for people's birthdays and right. certain events and there was an opportunity for me to go up and do photos for a nonprofit and it was um, for fun and yeah. so I said I'd be happy to do that fine and when I did I was so surprised at the results mm. I loved doing it so I was hooked okay. that was it so this might be um, you know when you're thinking about well you're a pilot and you're a photographer and you're doing aerial photography <coughs> can you do both at once or you have someone flying the plane and you're taking pictures? I do have a co-pilot okay I often will fly the plane to the location and then the other pilot takes over while okay. I do the shooting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I looked at a lot of your work, and um, I think the thing that is is just so interesting, you know, we talk about what makes any image an interesting image, and, of course, it's your perspective. And, I mean, the perspective from the air, it's so different from how we, we see people in this plane every day, and then you're taking something that is certainly from a different perspective, but... T to the nth degree, right? I mean, w way above. Right. So it's, you know, is that, did you find that, you know, interesting, that perspective from Oh, it's, from it's the absolutely thrilling. Yeah. There, it, and it takes your breath away. Mm. And, it's, and it's, it's a surprise because often the places that you know as you walk along um, on the earth are yes. different. <laughs> exactly. I, you know, you were saying you, you take, uh, do a lot on Cape Cod and the islands, I think. Mm -hmm. And of course, many of us have vacationed there and driven around there, and we think we know our way around. But to see it from the air must be really interesting. It is. Yeah. And you, get, you just get a perspective that you just can't get when exactly. you're walking along the beach or you're in a boat. Right. Yeah, it's very different. So uh, we talk a lot about uh, the gear that photographers use. We all love our gadgets and gear. What, um, I don't know if you have to use uh, things that are really different uh, in aerial photography, but what's the, what's the gear that you use? I don't use anything that different or that fancy. Um, I 
choose, um, I always have an SLR, SLR camera with me, usually Canon's, and um, I usually keep two just in case. And to me, I'm more comfortable having the camera handheld as opposed to putting it um, bracketed really? somewhere. Yeah, because and the movement of the airplane or the vibration that's it's it works. Wow, it works. I m more or less I'm absorbing it. It's okay. not that shaky. And if it's really that bumpy a day, I'm probably not up there anyway. Okay, okay. Uh, so now there's more control. And the other thing too is that the pilot really works with me. Okay. And sometimes the pilot acts as the zoom for me. Oh, okay. So you do use a zoom lens, I'm I assuming. do use a zoom lens, but I don't use a really long one. Okay. Because usually it's a matter of, if, if it's so long, it'll get out there and wobble in the wind. Okay, <laughs> exactly. Because I didn't bracket it. Okay. But I, don't, I found I haven't really needed to. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, who are your clients? When, like, who are the people that want aerial shots? They're, um, a lot of realtors are interested in ah, them for marketing right, their, okay. the homes that they're selling. Um, developers too that maybe have a particular project that they've done and they and once it's finished they want to see what the overall sometimes they're interested in step by step how how a project is coming along so they'll want to have okay. views then and lots of homeowners lots of individuals that just they love these places they mean something to them people move away mm. um, they like to take mm. a, a photo with them or they already have moved and somebody sends them a picture yeah, interesting. Yeah. So mm -hmm. there seems to be quite a market for aerial photography then. It's a perspective people don't see yeah. every day. Um, now, aerial photography obviously is so different than, you know, here, uh, photography here on terra firma. Uh, what do you find most rewarding and then most challenging about it? I think the rewarding part is that the sense, um, there's really a sense of freedom in flying, mm. especially in small planes. <laughs> and the There's view... There's a, a, a sense of um, freedom and then terror for other people, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> well, I have to be careful too, whether I'm flying alone or, wi or with another pilot. Um, so there's there's a thrill to it that's, mm -hmm. that's very exciting. Okay. Um, the challenging part has to do often with the weather and coordinating. Oh, right, okay. Because you may be determined that I'm gonna do this today and all of a sudden it's too windy. Exactly, or, okay. Or you, go, you get to the airport and something's happened to the plane. Okay, so a lot of other factors yeah. outside of your control then. Right. That's interesting, I didn't right. think about that. Mm -hmm. um, what, any kind of advice you would give to people watching who might be interested and say, hey, that maybe they're already a pilot or maybe they know someone who's a pilot and they say, you know, I might like to get into that. What, what advice would you give them on how to start that? Well, number one, uh, ask yourself the question, do you like to fly in small planes? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Asked and answered here, uh, yes. Um, and secondly, um, do you feel okay with when, you, when you're shooting that you'll be doing it constantly in motion? Okay. There's no like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, we gotta readjust something. Right. It's, you've moved. <laughs> right. So you have to be quick about that and you have to like it. Um, and then the other is the flexibility about the weather and the planes right. and, and the, these kind of conditions. I mean, I think every photographer has to deal with lots of different exactly. things and go with the flow. So it's just a different set of yeah, circumstances. Yeah, exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. well that's interesting. I know you have some projects we're gonna talk about. We're gonna look at some of your work. Um, you have a book out. So uh, we're gonna talk about all those things uh, when we return. Uh, so stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to take a closer look at uh, some of Margot's work, and we're going to see some other um, TV productions that she was uh, featured in. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Point and Shoot. We're here today talking to aerial photographer Margot Cheel. Uh, she's based in Cohasset, uh, and uh, we have heard how she got her start. Uh, she is a pilot as well as a photographer, and uh, she married those two interests into quite a successful career. Uh, so now we're going to take a closer look at some of Margot's work, and she's going to uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, about these shots. So let's take a look. Oh, so where's this? So this is Hingham. Oh my gosh, I must confess, I'm from Chicago, so I, I have lived in Hingham uh, for 20 years, but 
have not well, now, seen these vantage points. So now that you is, get the new view. Yeah. Wow. The perspective. So that's Hingham Harbor that and all the way beautiful. to Boston. And one of the things about um, aerial photography in particular is how people relate to place. And this, I had this um, as a very, very big print and an exhibition. Um, and this fellow came along and he looked at it and he said, I don't believe this. This is my whole life is in this picture. Oh my gosh. He said, I went to school and he pointed to oh a particular my place. Gosh. I grew up in this house there. I learned to sail down there. <laughs> wow. Um, I swam off the beach there. Yeah. I, um, and now I have a house that's out there on Crow Point. Oh my I gosh. absolutely have to have this picture. That's <laughs> wonderful. So, um, that is really amazing. And this is Glastonbury Abbey, also wow. in Hingham. And again, what's so wonderful about, for, about aerial photography is how you can capture, like this is pretty much th the main part of, of the campus of Glastonbury Abbey with that Campanile and the big main um, building right. that's there. And this is World's End. Oh my gosh. And again. Um, now I have walked there, run there so many times and I know it's a figure eight, but to see it like that, it, 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 I, I, in my mind's eye, I, I couldn't see it like that. That's amazing. It's really like a little jewel. Wow. And so when you're doing those, um, if we talk a little bit of, of um, technical information that you could give people. So you're, you're doing something where you really want everything in focus here, right? So I mean, we're, we're like, uh, you know, when you're, when you're seeing the, the close-up part of World End and then all the way to Boston, right? So mm -hmm. now, how do you set that up so that you have everything in focus like that? Well, you know, because I have no time in the plane to really oh. do, a lot of the time I just go with infinity. Okay. Because there isn't time. And, and it's more about getting the shot, setting up the composition of it, capturing the light in a particular because way. you're far away. And so. I'm moving. Right. And I'm moving the whole time. So where's the, is this? So that's, that also is World's End. Okay. So the other was the summer and this is uh, the fall. Ah. The same, the same area. Wow. And you don't see that S. When, no. you're, when you're walking yeah. through the paths right. at all. And the other interesting thing is, remember it was Frederick Law Homestead yes. who had designed this and set this up and it was gonna be a housing development. So he was the one that set up the roads and the trees were planted, but then no houses ah. were built. Thank goodness for us. Right. And so this is uh, something that you have coming up? Right, right. These are two shows that are coming up that I'll be um, exhibiting at, at Marshfield Hills, May 23rd and 24th, and also in Cohasset at their art festival on the Common, June 19th, 20th, and 21st. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. It's not, uh, not to be missed. I like to take part in that every year. It's usually a beautiful week, uh, weekend. If it so, doesn't rain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, that was really interesting. It shows you, I think, the perspective, which is so different than our you know, normal plane that we see things in. Very fascinating. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some more images that you have set to music. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you tell us about what we're going to see here? So most of these images are on Cape Cod. And the, the beauty that you find there is just so spectacular. And when I did this and set it to music, I wanted to convey the sense of beauty and calm and, and a mood okay. that they really do invoke. All right, let's take a closer look.
Wow, I can see uh, I can see what you meant about the mood there. That's uh, that was really interesting. Now, some of those images can also be seen in book form. Tell what can you tell us about your book? Right. So this is a book called Sea and Sand from the Sky. Okay. It has images that are from um, the South Shore as well as down on Cape Cod, and. Along with the images, there I have quotes that are from aviators. This is what it looks like. Okay. And, and the idea of the quotes was to convey to people um, how pilots see also. Uh, and okay. they're, they get excited right. <laughs> um, about the views that they, that they see as well. Yeah. Um, many times when I fly with a co-pilot, he'll say, I'm so happy you asked me to do this because this has been so much fun. Uh, <laughs> so what inspired you to do the book? I, I had had so many images over the years co collected, and I actually had a lot of people ask if it could be in a book. Okay. And I wanted to have them be in one place and be available. Okay. Um, plus, in addition, it becomes a great big calling card. Exactly. For people to see a so lot of the images. So this contains images from mostly New England or? Mostly Cape Cod mostly and the Cape South Shore. Cod. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I meant to ask this before. Are they uh, not being a pilot or knowing anything really about um, flying? Do you, are most of the shots taken at the same height? I, I mean, do you fly altitude? at a certain, yes, altitude. Yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily, although we are, we are restricted um, by the FAA rules. Okay. Um, we, we can fly 500 feet over water. Okay. Or uninhabited areas, and otherwise it's 1,000 feet. Okay. But it, it varies, and it depends on what I'm after. But generally, I'm, be I'm between about 800 and 1,200, 1,500 feet. Okay, and that gives altitude. you a nice perspective. Right. Of, okay. Right. Um, and any th any favorite images that you have in the book? Oh, that's Too a hard many. question. That, it's like, like your babies. Which, which one of children? your babies yes. do you like? Yes. Now, one of the fun things was meeting <clears throat> some of the people. Um, Edgar Mitchell, who who was uh, an astronaut with Apollo oh. 14. Wow. I met him, and he saw my book, and he's endorsed it. Oh my gosh! And um, he's right here on oh, the back wow. cover. That's wonderful. Um, as well as as um, a number of others. Um, I'm a member of the Woman Pilots Organization called the 99s, oh, wow. which is um, was started by Amelia Earhart oh back God. in 1929. It's okay. still going today. Yeah. So the inter the person who was the international um, vice chair of that um, endorsed the book as well. Oh wow! So. It, there were a lot of people that were involved in it, as um, as, ma as many books. <laughs> and where can people find this book? They can find it in Cohasset at Buttonwoods. Okay. And as a matter of fact, there's going to be an opening, a uh, book signing, okay. May 2nd. Oh, great. So you can get an autographed copy. Yes, you can. Great. Also, it's on my website, okay. margotchiel.com, and on Amazon. Wow. So that's another great example. Uh, has a lot of samples of Margot's work all in one place. So that's, uh, that looks like it would be a, a great gift or a, a great read. So anyone who's interested in aerial photography. Um, now, another, another place that, uh, that you could have been seen was on TV on the Chronicle show. Uh, we're going to see a clip from that show. But why don't you tell us how did they came to you and they were interested in uh, featuring you on their show? They did. They they gave me a call one day, and I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> they um, they were interested. Anthony Everett, who, as you know, um, anchors that. Right. He he really likes flying, and he had done oh, a piece okay. um, for uh, something around aviation. He said, "Why don't we do a whole show oh. that was related to people who do different things around aviation okay. with flying?" So. Um, they called me All and right. they because they knew that I had done aerial photography. Okay, so good Well, we have that piece and we're gonna take a look at it right now. So stay tuned Up in the air next on Chronicle the aviation program at Bridgewater State University nearly guarantees a job for its graduates, as we'll hear in just a moment. But first, in 1997, Margot Cheel began her professional photography career, firmly planted right here on the ground. But one flight, really, was all Cheel needed to take her career from earthbound to airborne. We are so lucky. What a fabulous day. Yeah. For aerial photographer and pilot Margot Cheel, a nearly cloudless sky is her idea of a perfect day at the office. 
Cheel came to this unusual profession through a circuitous flight path. After her daughters left for college, she began exploring a new horizon. Nice. One introductory flight, and Cheel was hooked. And I was exhilarated by the view that you can see from above. A totally different vista on the world, and a perspective that you just don't see in your everyday life. And it's nature and it's beauty and what's happening up, up there and down there and around you that you don't see until you get that perspective from on high. Cheel's stunning photographs are sold in galleries and collected in a coffee table book of her work called Sea and Sand from the Sky. Cheel also lenses aerial pictures for real estate companies and is commissioned by private clients who want landscape portraits for all sorts of personal reasons. I find that's often what my assignments are for. A place that's really special, where it's a summer cottage that people have gone to and it brings memories to them. Or some rock over Cohasset Harbor where somebody was engaged. <laughs> All these different kinds of special meanings in the landscapes. We connect to land, and I'm up in the air being able to record that for people. So that's a thrill. I like being able to do that. An experienced pilot, Cheel wisely lets someone else do the flying when she is clicking away. On this day, longtime collaborator Chris Heilberg of Alpha One Flight Services is piloting his Cessna 172. The pair departed Plymouth Airport to explore the ever-changing contours along Duxbury's stunning coast. So much of the photography as of the coastline, what is it about that that fascinates you? There is something really interesting about the way the land meets the sea and the shorelines, which are so different in many cases. And the colors that come up are just fantastic. That again, when you're standing on the beach, you don't really see. And then to see how rivers meander and where they go. So that's been a big fascination for me. Cheel's digital photographs have a painterly quality to them and very often an ethereal allure as well. She says seeing the world in such a breathtaking way can't help but turn you into a bit of an environmentalist. It raises an awareness, which is one of the, the purposes of my doing this kind of photography as well, is to bring that awareness to people about what's going on out there in nature. And if this is something you love and this beauty is here, don't you want to do something to preserve it? And if not, then what you see today may not be here. Wow, so that must have been really exciting for you to do that piece, and uh, hopefully a lot of people got to see it. Uh, thanks so much for being my guest today. We learned a lot about uh, aerial photography. We learned a little bit about uh, what this area looks like now from the sky. So um, look for Margot's work um, in bookstores, online, on her website. And uh, if you're interested in uh, you know, aerial photography, check out her website. She has a lot of good information on there. She's also involved in uh, workshops and other exhibits, so you can get that information on her website too. Uh, remember, when you're making your own photographs, you know it, what it starts with. You just have to point and shoot. I'm Margot Cheel, and this is my bag check. So, this is one of my cameras. It's a Canon, and its lens is 18 to 135. This is pretty much my basic size. I don't really go for a lot of high, um, long lenses. In addition, I have another lens as a backup, which is similar to that, and this one is a 28 to 135. Then I carry, um, this is my battery and a charger in case somewhere I need to do that, charge it up. Then in addition, I have other, I have cards 
that are in this pack. So here, for example, are, um, are where I keep them, store them, and one of the things about being an aerial photographer is that you really have to watch the weight and what you bring into the plane. So I travel very light. This is um, a, a cleaning um, wipe for the, for the camera, for the lens. And um, I have my business cards and a little tiny manual in case I need to check anything, which I never do when I'm flying. I don't have time. In addition, in this other bag, and this is what makes it things um, quite different from a lot of different bags, is that this is an aviation chart. Because when I go to the airport and I meet with my co-pilot, we look over um, what area we're going to um, shoot. So I have that. And in addition, then I have my list of, um, of the sites of where we're going to go to. So with this and then this, we look to see where um, we're going to go. And if we're close to Boston, we need to call Logan Airport so that we can get permission to go into the airspace. And if we're very short, which is what we always are, um, they'll allow us in for maybe three or four minutes. So um, then I also, in my bag, this is my pilot's logbook so that I can log the time that um, I was in the air. And um, additionally, I have, again, as a backup, and often I do use two cameras. So this is my, my other camera. And on this one, I have a longer lens, which is uh, 70 to 300. And that is my bag check.